PWO, 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 PWO. It's just me. Yeah. Apparently, it is just right. Oh, it's Dwight. Oh, oh. Oh, uh, oh, I know what's going on. Hey, everybody. Welcome tags. to the PWO WrestleCast. We got uh, we got that pinned tab thing going on here. Now we're back to how it typically is. So, uh, hey, long time no see. As always, I'm your host, Matt. With me tonight, I have Ryan Alvarez and the front man himself, D. White. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you would like to book me, it does not require a five-digit number. It just requires a two-digit number. Oh, but guess what? So you can book me for a three-digit number, but uh, my uh, my agent's email is in the bio. So. Mm. For real. You ask me to be on your show, as long as it's the day I can work, I'll show up. Yeah. I'm cheap. Easy. <laughs> Matthew is, is Matthew's prostituting himself out right now. Hey, man. Well, you know, Look, look. Sean Ross Sapp. Mm-hmm. You want a guy for your show? We can shoot, shoot, shoot the shit, figure it out, talk it out, make fun of Triple H together. Yeah, my, our people talk to your people. I, I say that all the time, though. Hey, I'll, I'll go see any band show. I appreciate appreciate the effort. So same with uh, same with indie shows. It's like, hey man, if I'm available and it's close by, I'll go see it. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm just here for a good time. Yep. So just for the record, I'm head of talent relations. If any of you want to get these gentlemen on your show to talk wrestling, you got to go through, <laughs> period. Yeah. You can slide you my book, And if you want to book Whiskey Tango 6, you're going to have to call Tamara. She's our booking agent. So I don't have her information, but you can talk to me. Though. Hey, guys. <laughs> Happy Thursday. Impact's already kicked off. Uh, hopefully you're joining us. If you saw us on the... Uh, on the tweet machine talking about it come on over happy to have you with you uh have us here if you're watching while you're watching impact let us know if some cool stuff happens we're gonna do our best to keep an eye on it because we have uh, our impact prediction show we have to tape after this live show so you uh you want to help us out with that appreciate you we have a bunch of stuff to do today but uh man this is kind of a recap episode i think because so much stuff has happened and we haven't really had a chance to talk about impact last week AEW from Friday, and of course NXT this week for their go home show. Uh, and God forbid if you give us any extra time, what else we can get into? <laughs> um, oh yeah, well, there's a lot. I th- hey Matt, I think we need to clear up our banter at the beginning of the show here because uh, maybe people aren't caught up to speed that uh, there were rumors around that Braun Strowman was uh, trying to get exorbitant fees for his uh, appearances on the Indies. Uh, he d- he didn't really. <laughs> He put out a tweet to, to clear it up, which didn't really clear it up. He just said, call my agent. Said, but he had said, I hadn't talked to any promoters yet. So, I mean. Right. Mm, okay. Yeah, I mean, but if you want to book me, my, you know, my agent's emails in the bio. And so it's like, he didn't say that that wasn't. And maybe his agent's floating that out there because agents do that. You know, maybe someone inquired to the agent and the agent says he wants a hundred grand. And okay. I think that's, I mean, that's one of those things where it's, you know, your agent acts on your behalf. I know because I have one. And, and, and so, you know, we, th- there's a little bit of negotiation as far as between you and the agent and ultimately what the agent asks for, that's what the agent does. Right. I'm, I might know that I might not know that that's a situation where, um, how that works. Cause what happens with us is the agent calls us and say, Hey, these people want you to come. Here's what they are asking. Is that work? Now we don't know what she what what was presented to them. So I'm not taking up for Brian Strowman. Damn it! Let's get on the impact. Wrestling. I'll say this. You know, I could definitely see it being like, hey, would you pay 10k to get Braun Strowman on your show? Uh, like, yes. I I could see a lot of like that kind of, and maybe that's where this is coming from. I mean, he can't compete until August 31st, right? I, know. I mean, you know what? Nobody knows. I mean, that's one of the things with these releases, especially when you get released and your contract is not up, right? 
I mean, they can't really, I mean, they sort of fired you. So there's, I, I think in, in that situation, unless it's a deal, and this is what a lot of people are thinking, that it's a work and he, they're, they're trying to restructure deals. And so they release them and then they restructure deals and re-sign them. I think some rumors go around that's what they're doing with Buddy Murphy. I mean, not Buddy Murphy, Alistair Black. You know, that maybe they're trying to like, because, because they're trying to trim the budget. That's what they're trying to do for whatever reason, selling to NBC, selling to Disney, who knows. But ultimately, that might be what's going on. So, of course, he's not going to do anything to mess that up. That's why you see all these tweets that are like, we think, thank you so much for the opportunity that you just fired me from on a text, on a group text. You know. Yeah, and in in Alistair Black's case, if you guys already heard the um, podcast with Renee Briquette, oral sessions. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't have a microphone. Um, <laughs> it just really it's it's gonna look weird when you watch the Facebook feed, but um, you you can just see and hear the excitement Alistair Black had. Uh, when he was saying, oh, I could go to AEW, wrestle this group of guys, go to New Japan, wrestle this group, group of guys, I could go to Ring of Honor. Like, just the building excitement as he continues to just go through this list of huge names that everybody would love to see. It would – I, you can offer him whatever you want. I, I still don't think he's coming back. He's – I think – I think Alistair Black, as much as he was protected by Bruce Pritchard, I don't I don't think that any amount at the moment could bring him back. Braun Strowman, on the other hand, I don't think there's a lot out there for him. I think I think if they offer him a deal, he needs to take it. Because, you know, whether it's true or not with this five figure um, you know, appearance fee. Um, whether it's true or not, it's 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 not a good look, you know. If, so if they can restructure and bring him back, it's probably what's best for business. Um, Alistair Black needs to stay the hell away. Yeah, and and but and to get back on that, just to, just to, from my own perspective, if, if some if someone calls and offers a gig that you don't want to do, that's what mm. you do. So he doesn't want to do NDG. He, he, he wants to go back to WWE. I think that's we get that. back to this conversation. We have to take a quick pause. Impact update. Uh, Moose and Kenny will challenge for the Impact World Championship this Saturday at Against All Odds, um, which will take place at Daly's Place. Oh. Wait, against All Odds is going to be in Jacksonville? Now, the, the tweet is not specific whether the whole event will take place there or if just the main event will. However, um, at Slammiversary, Sam, Sammy Callahan gets the winner of that match. Uh, uh, I like uh, both of those things. Now, I like that. I did think maybe there was a better match for Kenny at Slammiversary. If you guys we all did. But uh, I almost would have preferred if Kenny defended both the Impact and TNA World titles in one night. So the more that I read into it, it just looks like the main event, uh, which will be Moose and Kenny Omega, will be at Daly's place. Um, but sorry, carry on. Uh, well, wait, no. Before we get I, – I, I got to put this out there then because I feel like this may be the beginning of something here. Mm-hmm. Who's going to be at ringside for the match? Ah, uh, see, shenanigans. Are, are we going to get all Impact and AEW wrestlers? But it's just an empty arena. Um, I, I just, I'm, 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 yeah. I mean, we don't know, but I'm very curious to see what the end result is. I mean, the show is this weekend. I don't think they can suddenly just be like, "Hey, tickets for one match, show up." I mean, it's AEW; it's possible. Yeah. But- um, Tony Khan had a, or sorry, Don Callis had a huge grin on his face as Tony Khan was announcing that the match would take place at Daly's place. So it makes you think that there will be some AEW esque shenanigans afoot. I'm down for that. I, I'm ready for some more crossover than just Kenny. Yes. I, I love Kenny. I love Kenny. But like, I know Red Velvet's pushing to, or not Red Velvet, but uh, Big Swole and Killian, uh, Killian, uh, Kalen Klein are pushing to have a tag title shot against Impact, against Fire and Flava. I know there's a bunch of guys who want to work with Trey Miguel 
and all, all of those wonderful X Division talent you have, young talent, not just X Division talent. They were all just involved in X Division segment. That's why I'm saying that. Um, mm-hmm. So, uh, one last thing uh, on on news from recently released talents. Uh, everyone, and I guess this is to no surprise. Apparently, a lot of promoters are ready to book Buddy Murphy. <laughs> Uh, I bet they are. A, a lot of people are thinking that this guy is going to sell tickets just off of dream matches alone. And like... No way. What? No stinking way. Oh, that people are excited, right? Yeah. <laughs> it, it's almost <laughs> like he was WWE's Kenny Omega and they chose not to use him. Oh, no, they, they chose... They, they, used, they used him. They just, you know, made him uh, Ray Mysterio's... Uh, you know, daughter's boyfriend and, and a lackey to, thing. yeah, and then a, a lackey to Seth Rollins, and then maybe he tried to kill, uh, wasn't that bronze? Who was it? That, was that Roman Reigns? Tried to kill Roman. <laughs> tried to kill Roman. Like he tried to kill Roman. Like, like all that stuff. I mean, seriously, they made him look like a stooge. I mean, once he left Two Hundred Five Live, it was over. It's like that poor guy just got nothing but garbage, and then he got nothing. <laughs> so, you know, the I'm, thing I'm that- happy for him. I just I keep going back to it was Kenny Omega right around the time that Buddy Murphy was running the cruiserweight division put out that Buddy Murphy is the kind of talent who he would love to have an hour long match with, especially when Buddy Murphy doesn't have to cut weight. Um, oh, no. So look, I, I think all of us go back and forth on how much uh, Buddy Murphy has adapted his style to do some things that Kenny does like the knees, like the knees, but Ken, uh, Buddy Murphy does them very well. His move set is incredible to watch. Uh, and look, look, I don't care where. I don't care where. Sometime it has to happen. Kenny Omega versus Buddy Murphy. I don't know what his name is going to be outside of the E. I'm thinking he might just go by Matt Adams. <clears throat> um, so I'm very curious to see what happens. Yeah, at least it won't be Murphy. Uh-oh. Here's the worst right. thing. Can we can we officially talk about how that's a ripoff of Impact Wrestling? Gunner and Walmart. Murphy were a tag team. Oh well, yeah. Well, and then ripping off Impact. But just, you wanna if we're gonna if we're gonna belabor this point, just think about the Buddy Murphy and Mustafa Ali. Just think about that, like how good that was, and Ali how is not. How, you know, and how we're not going to see that ever, <laughs> and how both of them got saddled with just garbage when they got to the main roster. Seriously. All right, so we we gotta we gotta backtrack here and cover Impact from last yeah. week before we can talk about Impact from this week here. Okay. Good stuff. Uh, <laughs> they started the show, and God, thank God they did. They started the show with Josh Alexander versus TJP in a 60 minute Iron Man X Division title match. This is a fantastic match. They put it all on Twitter or not Twitter, I'm sorry, YouTube. I, oh, it's and, and BTI, the before the impact. It started yeah. on that. It started so on that just, and then brought it yeah. on to the show, which I thought was actually smart. Yep. Um, just because you, you just added so much more screen time for the rest of your show while still having an hour long match. Uh, Josh Alexander does end up picking up the win in sudden death overtime. Uh, and in a later uh, promo, he declares himself, you know, while he is the only uh, Impact company signed champion, that makes yeah. him the king of the mountain. Yes. Wasn't it like, a, did you feel it was like a face Man. turn? Did you feel that? It I was thought- like a. He went from being the north, and then it was almost like a face turn, kind of like I'm. I feel like he's been a face since since he's been a singles run. Um, yeah. Like they kind of put him on the heel side initially, but then he's kind of been mm-hmm. like, eh, "This isn't it." Yeah, but in that yeah. match, but in that match with TJP, TJP's obviously a face, but it's like when he got done, they're both like, like it made them both like heroes. Yeah. Well, yeah, the story has been that there's been you know just you know mutual respect between them anyway. So, I mean, but even with that, I still think that he could be a tweener because he literally could just be, you know, I am I am the only champion that Impact has. So it's more of that cocky bravado. Mm-hmm. So I, I really think he's working tween here. Um, yeah. But the but the match itself 
is the best Im- impact match um, in recent memory. It was without a doubt. doubt. Best TJP's ever looked in the impact ring. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you that. I'm with that. Um, shout out to him as well. Hopefully he's okay. I know he just went under surgery for a uh, broken nose. He said things are kind of loose. So uh, we know impact uh, films ahead. Hopefully we'll see him back soon. I know we saw the return of Eddie Edwards here. Uh, so it looks like he's going to be good to go. Uh, at, at least I'm curious to see how much they've, they've taped out. Cause maybe Eddie Edwards is still recovering. Um, Uh, next up, Jake something defeats Rohit Raju uh, by spearing him through a table to win the matchup. It was a table match. It was a tables match, and and I'm going to tell you that that um, like they teased so many, there were so many through the table teases, and that it got to be a little a little irritating. And then at the end, it was just so obvious that what was getting ready to happen, and that but that was a nasty, nasty. Like it was like a spear through the table. He get he did on him or what whatever. Yeah, spear. But, yeah. but his oh my gosh, his like it, his neck. Oh my, when it happened, I was like, oh my gosh, that's that was rough. Man, but, uh, I stand by this. Row Heat is so incredibly underrated currently in Impact. Oh yeah, that dude does not get the credit for a how good he works and b how good he makes everyone else look in ring. Yeah, and I think a part of that though is he was kind of playing that you know, cow, you know, kind of that cowardly X division champion for a little while. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So I I think, I think about this. Yeah. So, uh, but no, you're absolutely right. Glad that um, he's getting some spec on his name. here. Yeah. Um, And you know what? I like seeing him in these matches outside of the X division. Um, Go ahead. But then, you know, Jake, something looked good too. And I, you know, to be because he got kind of hung out and dry in that in the whole like um scandals you know and and so we weren't really sure what was going to happen with him and he's sort of gone from he's not with the OBE thing now but i thought he looked good too it was a good match i i think jake something is a star mm-hmm. i stand by that i'd like to see him win more of his feuds and i think maybe this mm-hmm. match part of that i would like to see him win a little bit more against ove or not ove Oh Lord, violent by design. That's a different that's, that's a that's a different uh, group. There's a lot of letters. Um, All these yeah. letters. Uh, up next, Rich Swan was supposed to face W Morrissey, and W Morrissey just decided, "Nah, we're gonna fight." Uh, they get split apart by security. Willie Mag makes the save, hits uh, Morrissey with a chair, and it does nothing at all. Uh, so this this is all just to kind of keep pushing this match off to the pay per view. Yeah, if I I know we're going to see Rich Swan in a couple weeks when we go to Next Gen. Okay, we'll do it. I watch our watch our prediction show to see how I feel about this upcoming match. I held I held back. Yeah, that was that was waiting. I was going to have to say. The opinions of Ryan Alvarez do not necessarily reflect the opinions of Podcast World Order and <laughs> There you go. Um, we have backstage. I'll just, I'll have to be Stephen P. New there and be a lawyer for a bit. Yeah. We have a backstage segment with Tennille Dashwood and Rachel Elring. Kind of, you know, Tennille trying to push the tension between her and Jordan Grace. Uh, we get backstage seg- yeah, segment. Uh, with Brian Myers working on Sam Beal to make him a better wrestler, a more professional wrestler. Uh, hey, look, this is fantastic comedy stuff for me. Uh, go back. I think it was really funny. It also kind of makes fun of wrestlers with bad tattoos, which is great. Shout out. Hey, to- I'm gonna. Yeah. I'll also, also want to throw out this too. I'm do a little Jim Cornette. Um, that when uh, when George Grace walked up, Rachel Ellering called her Trish. And I was like, oh, because, you know, Jim Fortnite had a. You good? I don't know what happened just now. Anyway, we got a <laughs> storm going on. Jim, Tor- oh, no, Jim Cornette had a thing where he, where he hates that the wrestlers use their real names on Twitter. Yeah, so, that was a big thing. Well, God, was that our first year on the air? 
Yeah. I mean, that's my first year on the air where everyone lost their mind when Jordan Grace was like, my name is Trish Parker. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And so, but anyway, when Rachel Ellering called her Trish when she walked up, which I thought was kind of funny. And then they didn't edit it out. Uh, we get the announcement that next week, or well, this week, today, Rosemary versus Havoc. If Havoc wins, it's going to be a triple threat match against all odds. I still don't care. I wonder if that's going to happen. Fire and Flavor successfully retain against Jordan Gray. Oh, is that Thunder? I think I just heard Thunder. I think the storm has officially arrived. Uh, from what I remember, a pretty clean victory. Mm-hmm. Um, Fire and Flavor actually both like champions. <laughs> Look, I don't care if people like him or hate him. That's how you book at least a tag team. <laughs> like, they're at least strong. I like to see them, you know, not have opponents that are significantly bigger than them every time. But, like, I, I appreciate the fact that we've made them a very strong tag team and we're pushing them. We also get a segment later uh, that's going to show that we're going to get Kimberly and since so long. Susan. Versus Fire and Flavor at Against All Odds for the belts. They got some unfinished business. As Susan said, they touched her inappropriately. Yeah, I'm glad oh. we're not seeing Susan when we go to Next Generation Wrestling in Knoxville, Tennessee. You don't know that? Um, Susan, Susan's not booked. So You don't know that? Uh, I can confirm it. it. <laughs> I, I, I hope you're right, Ryan. I, I am pulling my head of talent relations card. We are not going to see Susan. We will see Sue Young. All right. All right. Fine. We had Kojima versus Cody. I'm sorry, Deaner. Sorry, we got we got guys going by by singular names. I always assume it's first. Yeah. Name. I I forgot that Cody is another wrestler. He is. Um, and Kojima gets the victory. Shocker! New Japan, yeah. great everywhere. Love Kojima. Um, I like I love Kojima too. I love Kojima in 2006. No, I mean, I, mean he, I like him now, but that was – I was like, come on, man. But, I, I mean, wish, he's still tough and he's stiff, but, you know. I wish it wasn't Diener. I, I, I hate yeah. that Diener is the one who keeps having to eat the pins here. I know they're kind of pushing in the storyline, and I get that, and I like that, but I feel like I have not seen him actually get a win. I agree. You want me to, you, you want me to really stir up the pot here a little for you? Absolutely. Um, crazy – Crazy Steve defeated Diener on BTI. Uh, oh, no. Well, they are getting a tag title shot at Against All Odds this weekend. Oh, my God. What's so, up? it's going to be a... Uh, so, it is going to be a street fight this weekend. It's going to be it's going to be the Good Brothers against Sammy Callahan and a partner of his choosing. So, you think there could be some intrigue, a little bit of build-up. Who's it gonna be? Uh, they announced it's gonna be Tommy Dreamer. Oh, police! Do something correctly for a change. Ah, uh, moving on. Mm. <laughs> uh, Kojima does win, but he gets a little help from Eddie Edwards. Uh, so, bond by design, do call it Eddie Edwards, but uh, they're kind of cut off before they can say we're gonna point. Uh, and then Sammy Callahan defeats Moose via DQ. So yeah. as, you, as you heard, the fallout of that. Uh, here's what's left for Impact for today that we haven't gone over. Uh, have we had Joe Dorian versus Eddie Edwards yet? No. That's happening. W. Morrissey versus Willie Mack, no DQ. Right. Yeah, I knew that was coming up. I'll yeah. let you know whether it's happened or not. All right. Well, uh, Willie Josh Mack is like the, the gateway to Rich Swan, right? That's, that's what they're doing now. Unfortunately, Willie Mack is the Dolph Ziggler of Impact. Yep. <laughs> um, Tasha Steeles versus Kimberly. Rohit Raju and Chris Bay versus P.D. Williams and Trey Miguel. So noticeably uh, not in that match. Ace Austin, I stand by. I think he's injured and doesn't want to be out of his spot. Uh, and, of course, as you already heard, Dina versus Crazy Steve on the BTI. So what, what has happened that we missed? I know. Oh, also, we have Steve Macklin 
Uh, we got a vignette for his uh, arrival to Impact last week. I'm sure we're going to hear more on that. This, I think a lot of people expected this. He's in a relationship with Gianna Perazzo. I think a lot of people are expecting at least some decent things from him. You have not missed anything. We're caught up. Oh, beautiful. Well, guys, that's Impact. Da, 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 That's da, da, da. Um, it was it, no i would now remember it was, don Callis has called sammy callahan a journeyman that's <laughs> what so he called him in the back he goes ah, you look good you know you've been a not journeyman wrong. um because he's not wrong but uh, but you know i gotta tell you not, we want world champ in impact former <laughs> He lost to a girl, but still. Well, no, you done it. He's done. His character's done. It's over. He yeah. lost to a woman. Where it was like a girl. The back I'm, and I am going to put this out here just because for the heel turn on everyone else here, we're, we're just going to completely ignore the fact that women can handle more pain than men. But we're going to move. We're going to keep moving on to AEW on Friday nights. Uh, which opened up with Young Bucks versus Pentile Zero M and Pac, which is a fantastic match. Uh, they'd had a really great segment where uh, Nick almost got one over, pulled the mask off of uh, Penta, and of course, Penta prepared this time, had another mask ready to roll. Um, Young Bucks do mm-hmm. get the victory with a little dirty heel tactics. Uh, I got to tell you, I actually really enjoyed AEW, despite everyone thinking this was a horrible show. Mainly, though, because this was, like, the first time my sister and brother-in-law have watched wrestling with me in, like, years. And, like, can I tell you, them being like, yo, wait, you're telling me this isn't all, like, choo-choo sounds and <laughs> it, uh, Braun Strowman? <laughs> like. Oh, God, I forgot. Yeah. Yeah, that stupid train horn. They they were literally Ooh. like these guys look like they're actually like trying to hurt each other. It's like, yes, I feel less crazy. <laughs> uh, so I really enjoyed this impact. We spent a lot of it uh, on impact. Jesus, uh, dynamite. We spent a lot of it explaining to them professional wrestling, uh, which is a lot of fun. Which may lead to uh, a segment somewhere on YouTube down the road. <laughs> You just have to subscribe ah. on that. Uh, we get Mark Henry's first appearance in AEW. He's not here to fix AEW. AEW is not broken. What he is here to do is turn the screws, as they say, on Busted Open Radio. Uh, and, yeah. of course, all of a sudden, Vicky Guerrero rudely interrupts <sighs> and tells them, Excuse me. Excuse me. Vicky has a big announcement to make, and she says a new and generational luchador is here and wants everyone to know it. It's Andrade El Idolo. He is here. Mm -hmm. Picks up the microphone and tells everyone that he wants to become the new face of AEW, the new face of Lucha Libre, and he is here. No music. The face of all elite wrestling. No music, but I I also think that could just be you know, just to push the fact that he is a debuting talent, you know, and just to kind of build the suspense a little bit, you know, oh. um, if you, if you remember Miro's debut, um, you the know, best. you heard, you heard the best, but then you, by, by the time they got to the best man, you saw Miro up on, on, on the screen. I mean, it was exciting. I mean, it kind of spoiled it a second or a couple seconds too soon. Um, Right. So I don't know if that had anything to do with it, but um, no, I am all for this. He, there was a rumor going around that um, he had a little bit of creative control written in, um, which is why their talk stalled in March. In March, and now it's June. Let's get that around our heads. Okay, he wanted creative con- creative control in the regard that. And he Vito. wanted, he, yeah, yeah. He wanted to book when he wanted to lose. Uh, TK said no. Now we're in this reworked final stage of his contract um, where he has no creative control because creative control belongs to one man. And, and his that name is, is Tony Khan. Yes. Second thing, I hate that he's with Vicky Guerrero. 
well, and that could be a hot neck. Be a... <sighs> See, I mean, that's yeah. what I'm worried about, and I hope not. Because I understand he needs a mouthpiece. I don't think that Vicky Guerrero is the correct mouthpiece for him. I think that we might have a better option or two up up our sleeve. I have um, a take here. Go ahead. He doesn't need a mouthpiece. Um, now, no, and and don't get me wrong. He he is you know his English has improved. Yeah. But by no means is it perfect. Mm-hmm. Andrade doesn't need to say a whole lot. It's true. I mean, we look at you know guys that are in AEW now who don't speak perfect English or great English at all. Um, Sheeta just had her first you know English promo a couple weeks back, and it was pretty dang good. You know, so Matt might be on onto something here. But I will say if that we, if, we, if we did have to give him one, uh, Abraham. Uh, oh my God, I'm like Washington. Off. No. no, Abraham Washington. No, he's gone. He's just like Kobe he's... in Colorado. Well, no, he was stopped. He was stopped. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> no, a- Abraham, who's doing the work with Penta. Um, yeah. I want to say Ibrahantes, but I feel you're like talking about. Different... Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, yeah. like I don't think that's right. What's well, uh? What Alex Abrahantes. Alex, Alex Abrahamtis. Alex, so I think his first yeah. name is Abraham. God, because his know, last I, name is I, essentially I, Abraham I, with Tez at the end. Yeah, um, I, I think you guys are missing the obvious one, man. The, the, the Trinidad's out there. No. no. Uh, she where, is. where it is, she's not, though. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, if she's not signed with WWE where – the rumors are is that she's in talks with. Um, I think she's going to Japan when Alistair Black goes to Japan. Hey man, I'm just throwing it out there. Yeah, no. Um, I I have to check something really quick just before I can. Dead air. Can't have uh, dead air. Uh, I was going to say Hector Guerrero. Hector mm-hmm. Guerrero. Well, I can tell you it's not going to be Willie or Vina. Well, like Chavo, hey, Chago, Chavo Jr. doesn't have a lot to do since they didn't do that final season at Glow. So maybe he's... Chavo Guerrero he's... got shot, okay? But yeah, Chavo Guerrero is to... dead. Don't you watch Talking Chavo Mania too? <laughs> Wait, that's no. True. Is Chavo yeah. dead or I thought El Chico's dead? Yeah, Chavo that's got shot. Dead. I'm sure Chavo... No, no, I'm just saying Chavo got shot. Because I'm sure he did. Yeah, right. Oh God, was that yeah, okay? All right, that's that's a we whole need, other. We need to finish that. I, I have I have finished it several times. Uh, tag team action: Cody Rhodes and Lee Johnson versus Anthony Agogo and QT Marshall. The factory get the win here after a little distraction, and Agogo gets a good old shot in on Cody. Um, this is yeah, cool. That was a good one. I wish we did more of this prior to Double or Nothing. I don't know. I think they can still go with it, though. I think you I'm know with I mean? you, and I think there's room for it. I just wish we had a little more momentum on the factory side. You know, I feel like they have like none, and despite being the heels, like Cody is this juggernaut who can't be beat. And we we've covered this several times, but no, well, he just he got knocked the f out though. <laughs> I mean, didn't you see the match? <laughs> it's um, you tomorrow. Tomorrow Friday. Um, Anyway, but, uh, you know, and then, of course, QT Marshall did the whole heel like victory thing and how he conquered Cody. And he even put out a tweet, you know, that obviously the factory is the preeminent, you know, faction because and, and it was like he's doing what he should do. Right. So this is we're just at the beginning of this, man. This is not this is going to go along. So I, I think the, obviously we got some guys that and and I like it because the factory is essentially the homegrown guys, right? That's their NXT. They're all the developmental guys, yeah. Yeah, they're the, they're the developmental guys, and so it's like they're not going to be, they're not going to get super over. And so the fact that you know a go go comes in and that finish was just perfect for what you know what he is, even though the, I think he is left handed and he that was a right hand he knocked him out with. Just hey, I noticed stuff like that, <laughs> but uh, but, but it was a small thing. But he did knock him out. I was like, oh yeah, of course that's what would happen, right? Because he's the he's the boxer with the one punch power, and so I don't know. I'm 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 all for it. And QT Marshall, 
I like it because he's he is becoming very um I don't I don't want to say it, man, but he's I he's think the putting, goal was Larry Zabisco. Yeah, but he's he's definitely like putting putting a Zabisco-esque Kevin Sullivan kind of thing, not without the Satanism. So uh, just I that, also gotta that sort, add, of, that sort of thing. I gotta add to this, and then we have to move on before you get to everything that we're gonna cover. Because good lord, this is the trap. <laughs> we fall into our discussions here. Uh <laughs> I wonder if people don't get the QT Marshall character currently because Zabisco was so long ago, which would be kind of disappointing. You hope more people would do their homework, uh, yeah, but right. but I, I could see that being a thing here. And for those of you who don't know, go go back, watch some Larry Zabisco, watch watch some Kevin Sullivan. Like, uh, trust us. I think you're gonna have some more more appreciation for this character when you realize that it's almost like a tribute to a lot of older, great wrestlers and a great throwback character, I feel. Um, all right, we have the uh, Inner Circle Victory Lab, which pretty much confirms everything that we said. Inner Circle versus the Pinnacle is going to be the fight of the summer. I just, I just need to know how they're going to top it. I mean, we're going to have some, I think, singles matches coming up here, but... Orange Cassie's not done with Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega and Don Callis aren't sweating over Jungle Boy. Uh, Jungle Boy and Christian Cage defeat Private Party um, with uh, Mark Quinn tapping out to the snare trap. And then Matt Hardy hits a twist of, excuse me, a twist of fate on Christian Cage. Darby Allen and Sting, they address the crowd. Uh, and of course, Ethan Page and Corp- Scorpio Sky pop up on screen and mock. Uh, Darby and Sting challenge them to a tag match, but with someone other than Sting. Who is it going to be? Who is it going to be? Uh, Britt Baker celebration party gets spoiled by Nyla Rose by throwing all the Big Macs out and popping balloons. Kind of funny. Um, yeah. Pack and Penta don't want anything to do with Eddie Kingston after Eddie Kingston came out and helped them earlier. Red Velvet beat the Bunny. Uh, Red Velvet, I'm very glad she's okay. Dear God, that suicide dive was terrifying. Mm-hmm. Yes, I don't know if that's people not catching them or what. No, that was on her. If you watch it, that is definitely 100% yeah. on her. She fell right. too far. Um, Miro is ready to defend his title against Evil Uno next week. God, Miro. Uh, look, I don't care if people like his promos or not. I love them. I almost cursed how much, about how much I love them. <laughs> So First can I? Is, my wife is hot, and I'm thankful. <laughs> um, <laughs> secondly, I'd like to thank God for giving me the power to beat these men mercilessly. Like, I'm sorry, I love this '80s video game bad guy. Yeah. Like, it's fantastic. This is some streets of rage stuff. <laughs> mm-hmm. What if Evil Uno gets beat so bad? That he reverts back to when oh, he dear. debuted. Yeah. I don't know. All right. And, and here we go. Here's, in my opinion, the worst book decision of the night. Dustin Rhodes defeats Nick Camarado in a bull rope match. I would have mm. much preferred Camarado winning here. Yeah, but I don't, I mean, I, I think, I think 50 50. I think, I think whoever wins. It's going to get the point across because you could chalk it up to Dustin Rhodes being a veteran. He's been in many bull rope matches in the past. He knows how to get the job done in a, in a tough, in a tough spot, especially in the main event of a dynamite, which Nick Camarado has not been in no, not but- many big spots that he's been in. So um, that's how I saw it. Um, but it's without a doubt, Com- uh, Camarado's a star. For sure. Okay. Let me just say this, and I'm going to say this. Uh, Hitman, Jeff, you're out there, Jeff Hall, Hitman, purist, the wrestling purist. How do you win a bull rope match? Uh, isn't it by touching all four corners? Yes. You have to drag them to all four corners. That's how you win a freaking bull rope match. Put me on Quizzle Mania. So if, so if they don't, <laughs> so if they don't specify it, not a rule. No, no, Remember, no, this is AEW. This is this is this is this is not WCW. 
Yeah, we have this with the uh, the rules change. Match. Was that well, the other get, one that got people? Let, well, let, so. me, let me tell you something that is the Mac and Dream. That's the road it says that you have to touch all four corners to win a to win a bull road match if you will. I'm saving that's my cool. super hot take for later, but yeah. when we get to NXT. Mm. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No. I had. I had. I had no. I had no. No problem with this at all. Uh, I just want to see Camarado get a couple more wins. That's my only thing. I really. No, and I'm Camarado, obviously. So. And I'm totally on board with you. I think. Um, I think. I think if you take it from that perspective, that you know, Dustin Rhodes is a veteran. You know, it's a main event spot on you know TV. That. Colorado hasn't been in I think it makes the blow a little bit softer which is fair which which is fair I just I'd like to see I'd like to see more of the younger guys getting the victory over some of these older guys which we do get a lot of Christian Cage I thought was utilized very well in getting Jungle Boy over um so here is what's happening tomorrow Nyla Rose versus Layla Hirsch that's gonna be fantastic Christian Cage versus Han- uh, Angelico Don Callis and Kenny Omega are going to blow the lid off the conspiracy theory to get the AW world title off of Kenny. Cody Rhodes okay. is going to make a special announcement. It's actually just a match announcement. Uh, he did like make fun of the Twitter because every time Cody has something to say, it's a special announcement and everyone's kind of catching on to it. Cody had did the right thing. I think there was like, it's not, it's not that big. It's just chill. Um, we're going to have a, a six man tag young bucks and Cutler versus Pac, Eddie and Penta. Mm-hmm. Hangman Page and 10 will face off with Brian Cage and Powerhouse Hobbs. Miro defends against Evil Uno. Lance Archer will be in action for the first time since he lost to Miro. Uh, Darby Allen will make an announcement on his tag partner for Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page. And, of course, the Pinnacle will speak for the first time since Stadium Stampede. Uh, also, just to throw this out there, watch Dark and Elevation. You saw some pretty cool stuff over the past two days on YouTube, like uh, Hikaru Shida's completely new look. Mm-hmm. Um, just do it. Also, the acclaimed is money, but you already knew that. We all knew that. All right, Ryan, you you have a hot take for AEW. Um, first, an impact um, update. Um, Rosemary defeated Havoc, so we will still have a one on one match. Um, Havoc continues to be buried. Um, but that is it. Um, AEW is getting a lot of heat right now for not only this show being bad. But for the subsequent ratings that they are getting, and I think I think it's I think it's kind of tough when you've been getting solid eights and mid eights, you know, since since uh-huh. Dynamite started. You know, there's only been a handful of times where they've been on a night that they are normally on and been under eight. Um, one of which. Off the top of my head, was going to be stand and deliver. There was there was no way that it was seven ninety nine. Yeah, so, like right so yeah, yeah, and I think I think you have marks that are trying to kind of take time out of their day to be like, oh well, you know, Dy- dynamite last two weeks, you know, five this and four this. I think this week they had four sixty something in that. 63. Yeah. Guys, it it's the it's the NBA playoffs. It's Friday. This is N. this is recoverable. A, B. Once they make the move to TBS, they don't have to do this anymore. They get to stay on Wednesdays, regardless. Can I add? Yes, I would tell you that a lot of the audience that you're losing on Friday nights are the ones who just sat through two hours of SmackDown, four hours of wrestling's hard, guys. It is. Especially after the two I hours refuse. you just watched was, was garbage. <laughs> I refuse. This SmackDown is, is going down the toilet just like Raw. I try to give it a chance. It's bad. Unfortunately, I have to. So I, um, I accept my punishment and my lashings. Uh, but okay. just in general, I think everyone's reading way too much into this. Also, exactly. the responses of people who are like, well, if this was an NXT and NXT got these kind of ratings, people would be burying it. No, I sat here and said the same thing when NXT had to move nights. Yep. Look, it yeah. happens. It's going to probably yeah. happen while they're on Friday nights. When they're on Wednesdays, we'll see what happens. Yep. 
But legitimately, if, if SmackDown had to move nights tomorrow to Saturday for something real stupid, I tell you they would probably have pretty low numbers for the year. True. Because I'm not watching SmackDown on a Saturday night that's competing with a pay-per-view. I'm not watching SmackDown at all. Yeah, me neither. All right. So we've covered everything with AEW. We got to go to NXT. It's the go-home show. Uh, and we open up with Austin Theory versus Oni Lorcan. Oni Lorcan picks up the victory following some distractions on the outside. Uh, I, I, Brutal match. I, I love these two guys. Brutal. I love it. I'm happy that I'm happy Oni Lorcan's still getting some TV time with his partner injured. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we get a Cameron Grimes segment, which is always fantastic. Um, I refuse to mention the Dox Hendricks gimmick first uh, in your house. Um, bad, really. <laughs> and bad. hey, guys, I'm not. I, 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 God, I can't. I can't think of who said it, but there was someone. I just can't have my finger on it. Who said it's gonna be Legado del Fantasma versus MSK and Bronson Reed for all the gold? Someone, someone said it. Uh, I can't well, oh, wait. On. There you go. It happened. And that's <laughs> happened in your house. <sighs> and look, look. Sometimes the predictable decision is the right decision. This is going to be a fantastic match. I don't care what anyone says. No, I, I agree 100%. I, I'm not going to argue with it at all. I, I'm down for that totally. Um, totally. Speaking of wonderful, wonderful things. Isaiah Swerve Scott defeated Killian Dane. Hit Row is wonderful. I love Hit Row. Uh, I love everything. I just it got it got overbooked at the end of the match. I'm sure. I I want less of that because Swerve is more than capable. And I get that he's, you know, the you know, head of this stable and you know, you know, they're they're trying to get kind of everybody their spot. You know, yeah. there was that spot with Drake with with a with a Drake Maverick and Ashanti on the outside. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, that was, was the. I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I was thinking about it just now. I'll call that the. Hey, Drake, what did you think was going to happen? <laughs> yeah. Well, I I I I thought he was going to piss himself again. Um, <laughs> but never forget it, that it, that was a thing. Yeah, yeah, and. It it just got way overbooked at the end. Less of that, more clean wins. You know, you don't need all these shenanigans. Yeah, no, no need for all heels to be chicken shit. There you go. Uh, okay, look, this is a fantastic backstage segment that happened next. We see the arrival of Poppy. Um, mm. Cass is tired of all the attention that Poppy gets. Um, <laughs> Indy and Dexter. All the things there. I'm just gonna do all of this right now, okay? And we'll, yeah, we'll go back fair. and do the rest of the matches. So we we have Poppy talking with uh, with Triple H and William Regal, and they're like, "Well," and just like that, the the album's dropped, yay! And Loomis is there, and he offers her a, a picture that he drew of her, and she gives him a hug. And Triple H in the back is doing some of the best facial facial selling ever, of like. Yeah, samurai oh. cop le- levels of facial expression. And then Indy walks in, and she does her best. Not another teen movie reference of just Dexter, no, and stomps off. Uh, it, index uh, is gonna happen. We just don't know when. It's it's gonna be. They're gonna macho man and Elizabeth this. So hard. I love it. Um, All of it. But wait, wait, we're not done here because uh, <laughs> you have uh, Candice Lorray finally comes to the ring later on in the show and is like, I'm so tired of you, Poppy. I'm tired of everything you do, and I'm tired of all of this. Uh, either you come in here and you apologize, or we can actually initiate you to NXT, uh, and I can introduce you to the parking lot. And Poppy comes out and just goes, I'm not a wrestler. But I know someone who is, and it's Io Shirai. Io Shirai is Thank back. Uh, she beats the hell out of Candice LeRae. Uh, LeRae walks off after a missile drop kick. 
Uh, we get Shirai and Poppy celebrating in the ring. We also get a stare down between Io Shirai and uh, Raquel Gonzalez later on in the backstage segment. So I really like how we've incorporated a lot of different things happening all at once in this one storyline. I think that's a great way to tell stories. Uh, you have so many future things already written there. You have the issues with Dexter and Indy, Indy deal, or, uh, Candace dealing with Indy, and then Candace dealing with Poppy and the return of Io Shirai. Io Shirai, who's frustrated with Raquel Gonzalez. So many. I, I love it. Inter, interwebbing. It's good. Good storytelling, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I, hope, I hope you're right, and it's Macho Man and Elizabeth, and it's not Lana and Bobby Lashley. Because At this it point, could, I don't think it could, it, could, it, could, it could. Well, I don't know. Uh, it's uh, it's it, the, the, the you talked about Triple H's facial expression, Dexter Loomis's facial expression, which they had to move the camera around to catch his like bugged out eyes, which was which, <laughs> that was yeah that that, that was also uh, you know to his credit that helps tell the story too that he was, it was a very comedic and, spot. I mean, yeah. all, all the stuff with with Indy and Dexter has been really funny. Which has been kind of a nice change in pace for Dexter Loomis's like super serious stuff that they've been doing with him. Um, I'm, I'm I appreciate that we're kind of poking fun at the fact that he's mute. Yeah. Also, um, you know what's going to happen is eventually Candice LeRae after they lose the tag belts is going to turn on Indy, uh, and who's going to make the save? But Dexter Loomis and it, it's uh, WrestleMania all over again. <laughs> Index. Um. Mercedes Martinez defeated Cameron Clay. Uh, she was attacked by Zia Lee early, but Zia Lee got uh, turned away. And then she, no. and then Martinez beat the hell. I'm okay with this. We're going to talk about wrestling math later. Um, I have reasons. I have faith and I have reasons. Um, I stand by this. Uh, we okay. have Breezango and uh, Mackenzie Mitchell backstage talking about Walter and like cracking jokes on Imperium. Everything, uh, <laughs> Breezango and and well, Tyler Breeze and Fandango at this point of their careers, just with facial hair choices and just the fact that they're not younger guys anymore. I mean, they've been around for a very long time in WWE and in the system. Um, yeah, these guys look like they're just coming off of a binge, <laughs> like they've yeah. been in Miami for a little too long and they maybe did a little too much and just kind of rough, a little rough. Did you get? Did you get a little vibe of like a splitting up of Breezango, like a total tease of that? Okay. Yeah, I did too. Go teal. Oh, oh come Fandang on, Fandango. It's gotta be Tyler Breeze, right? It's gotta be uh, Tyler Breeze. It's gotta no. be Prince Pretty. Not at this point. Yeah. Um, okay, maybe. No, <laughs> we get the official announcement: Cameron Grimes versus LA Knight will be for the Million Dollar <laughs> Championship. Let me tell you, I knew what was in that case. Oh, I, I think we all, did. we all knew it. Everyone I was, did. I, I still popped when they opened it up. When so sometimes the predictable answer is the right one. It was awesome. And then um, Ted, every time Ted DiBiase does that, <laughs> I love it. I'm loving it. He's still got. Let's it. yeah. Let's see if they make the right decision. Uh, well, the right decision is still Cameron Grimes. Uh, I'll get into my choice at the NXT TakeOver it. Prediction Show. You'll be able to see that hopefully tomorrow morning as long as YouTube doesn't hate us. Grizzled Young Vets defeat August Gray and Ike Minjiro. It was a little fun match. Good to see uh, August Gray on TV. Um, Bobby Fish uh, gets a little video package here of him working out. He's uh, Warren and Lorkin. That's uh, still on. Don't forget, still on. Um, Ember Moon defeated Dakota Kai uh, by DQ, and she also laid out Gonzalez at the end. Uh, all through the night, we've had some, some championship stuff. William Regal's lost all control when he officially called out Karrion Cross on that. Cross was like, you've never had control of this division. And then just everyone fighting each other. And, of course, who stands tall yeah. at the end? Adam Cole, Bay Bay. Right. Mm. This is the go-home show. I thought, it was, I thought it was pretty solid. Yeah, it was pretty good. Um, I, I enjoyed it. There was some stuff, of course, you know, you want to see a little bit more of, you want to see a little bit better of. But overall, I was pretty happy with the show. NXT, I thought it was pretty good. Especially yeah. with it being a go-home show. You know, mm -hmm. you have to build certain things up to build for that show. So, 
Um, very, very curious yeah. to see what the hell happens this weekend. Well, well it makes didn't it make like it's, it's weird because WWE does such a poor job of this with most of the pay per views of making you want to watch it, and this made me want to watch it. it just well, did. Look, man, as much as we hate, well, I don't want to say hate, but it might be hate for some of us. As much as we are frustrated by Raw and SmackDown, NXT is is still the best WWE product. Oh, it's not even close. I mean, unless you count NXT UK, which is, was pretty good this week, too. Uh, yeah, but, um, we'll, have to, we'll have to dive into more of NXT UK. Man, God, at some point, we might just need to have to set aside a weekly schedule for that one. I, I love NXT UK. It's so good, but, man, it's so hard mm-hmm. to fit it into the show, I feel. We just want to have everything else. I mean, especially now that we have a new face of the women's division. She's a final boss, baby. Yeah, she is. Um, but God, that's all I had. That's three shows. We did all of that in 45 minutes. Anyone got anything to add before we move on? Yeah, I got something to add. I want to plug my new show that I'm gonna put out because I've already got two episodes to do. I'm calling it picking and winning. And one of them is going to be, I've already did uh dedicated some uh, budgetary uh, some of, from some of my uh, doge fortune that's right Cameron ground you're not the only one so uh I get, to get the mystery box from uh from her rest and tease which says according to my email will be here in two to seven days so we're going to unbox that uh and see what we get in the mystery oh, we, we've got two t-shirts and the mystery uh um wrestling uh from you know swag uh, box then also it's called, I call it picking and winning because I, I like to go to junk stores and every now and again I find some wrestling merch. So that's going to be more of when I find it. And don't you know, on Tuesday night when I talked about this with one already happened, I go to Goodwill and boom, I hit the mother load. Um, so I'm going to put make a video with that. I'm waiting until the till the box gets here, but I've already got those planned out. It's ooh, it's going to be so sweet because uh, it's sort of you think of American Pickers, think of. Pawn stars and then all those unboxing. What about those un- unboxing stuff. I, I, unboxing, baby. The second one we got. Uh, also, yeah, and I also want to. Uh, I've toyed with the idea of doing a wish.com thing. You know, seeing what we get from wish.com. That'd be great. <laughs> That's right, Goldaholic. We're coming for you, brother. <laughs> no, uh, but the, the the goodwill thing is is that's partly my hobby anyway, and I've got a lot of stuff. Um, you know, that, from, that I, it's just fine. But wrestling stuff is hard to come by because. Um, People don't get rid of it. I mean, kid stuff they do, like action figures you'll see from time to time. But like, I found a box of wrestling magazines once in all my years. It just, and then you look online, you sell them there, it's super expensive. But I'm, this is for like diamonds, Easter, golden Easter egg stuff. So I look forward to that. I definitely got two because I've got some. I, I, I told Ryan one of them that I found over the weekend. And then, of course, the next night I go out and find the mother load after that. So I love anyway, it. that's coming up. It's called Picking the Winner. Stay tuned for that. Mm-hmm. Oh, At sure. this point, Ryan, hit him with the plug. Yeah, you're watching us on Facebook. Thank you. Hit that, hit that like button. Hit that notification bell. That way when we go live Mondays and Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you can be notified that we are indeed live. Come and check us out. YouTube, come over, check out Alvarez versus Meltzer. There, there's a plethora of episodes that have gone up this week with more to come. Um, today's episode was Arn Anderson versus the Renegade from the Great American Bash um, with a little bit of history at the end as far as the Renegade goes. Um, but yeah, you go to YouTube to watch that. You can like that video. You can share it with your friends. You can even subscribe, hit that notification bell so when Alvarez versus Meltzer comes out, you can be notified. Also, Creative Control, we're wheeling and dealing, we're booking, we're filming. There are more episodes to come, so stay tuned for that. Also, guys, we're going on a little adventure. I don't know if you've heard about it or if we've plugged it a time or two. It's Next Generation Wrestling. We are headed to Knoxville, Tennessee um, in, about, in just over two weeks. Um, the show is Sunday, June 27th. 
go to nextgentn.net for tickets. There are not too many left. Uh, I confirmed that this morning. Um, so go there, go to the website. Um, adult tickets are 18, children's tickets are 15. Um, you can bring streamers, no confetti cannons. Uh, you'll get you'll get yelled at and scolded. Um, signs. Signs. Yeah, bring signs. Um, you'll be able to um, get, uh, well, if you are there, you'll be able to see um, PWO up on the on the digital media wall that they have. Um, I have I have come up with a pretty cool design to throw up there. So, guys, this is word. This is word of mouth. You you've got to be there. You've got to see us. Okay, and you know how we get there because of people like you who like what you see. You like what mm-hmm. you hear. So you go to kofi.com slash pwo one two three. It's as easy as one two three, just for the price of a cup of coffee a day. Screw that Starbucks junk. You go to kofi.com slash pwo one two three. You give us your coffee money. And we'll bring you outstanding content. And make sure you go check out Dwight on Odyssey. Hey, yeah, check me out, Dean of Old School on Odyssey. Hey, but you know, you forgot <laughs> we're not the we're not the only ones going to Knoxville. I mean, Sue Young's going in, going there. Uh, Rich Swan's going to be there. Uh, uh, Ka- yeah. Caleb Caleb Conley's going to be there. Matt Cross is going to be there. Don't forget. Oh my gosh, the American Wolf. Davey Richards is going to be there. I mean. JTG is going to be there. I mean, come on, guys. What are you doing with yeah. your life? Now? What are you doing with your life? You're not going to be there. Yeah, I will there. tell you that uh, the one change has been Petty and Pink will not be in action okay. um, the weekend that we go due to injury. So, um, unfortunately, we're losing out on that. And hopefully the next time we get around to Uncivil War, they're good and ready to go. Um, guys, it's a loaded card. Okay, we don't know who's going to answer the Tankman challenge. We don't. We have no idea. Not even Matt. I. It could be Matt. It could be Matt. I mean, we making don't know. a pitch. Yeah. Guys, that goes in the spoilers category of the Discord. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know. If you see any fan involvement, I'm going to just go ahead and apologize now. Uh, <laughs> but guys, if you can't make it live, and I hope you do, because Lord knows we're going to pre party bowl outside of the party bowl uh you know there's a place you can watch it around high spots network do be able to see this show if you can't be there live you can still support it and watch it digitally uh and with that guys i think we must bid you adieu we gotta record some prediction shows we gotta have another late nighter here on the pwl so we gotta go you guys gotta go have a great weekend Enjoy yourself. There's so much wrestling this weekend. You need to just go and watch it. Catch Dominion if you haven't seen it yet, because you should. So good. So good. Guys, have a great weekend. Check out the prediction shows. You'll see them posted to Twitter and Facebook. It'll be uploaded to YouTube. We'll see you all very soon. Goodbye. Mwah. Good night. Bang. Or life. Bye.